fingers crossed all the audio works it should Good. um i'm not even gonna kick you off the screen yet i'm gonna let you stay on so just you know be ready it's gonna it's we are live welcome everybody to ave explores live fingers crossed the audio is working right now aaron's gonna let me know as soon as she can that she can hear us it was working earlier and i'm really hoping it's continuing to work now um it's always yes i think it's working um so everybody, we are here. We are back for episode two of our Ave Explorers Live on the Saints. We are joined tonight by a dear friend, Bonnie Ingstrom. Um, I'll introduce you to her in just a minute. Uh, but as everybody's tuning in and coming in, and again, we're making sure that the audio is good to go. Uh, I just want to kind of recap a little bit about what we've been talking about. I'm checking my text to make sure that we're good. Uh, you know, we're doing this series on the saints, on the holy men and women of the church, our holy cheerleaders, our friends. We have an episode on our podcast tomorrow with Meg Hunter Kilmer. She's kind of known as the saint ninja in the Catholic world. Um, and Erin says she can hear us. We are good. Uh, so but Meg said something in tomorrow's podcast that I wanted to make sure I brought up tonight, not just to encourage you to listen to that, but um, to just kind of give us a preview of what we're going to talk about this evening. And that is that the saints often find us. And that even if like we've got our favorites or we've got the ones that we know the stories of or the ones that are really famous and popular and quoted all the time, that there are holy men and women who are, are out to find us and to bring us closer to Jesus Christ. And tonight we're going to hear the amazing story of a holy man who found a family and helped a family and, and really essentially like, you know, on, on behalf of his prayers really brought a family not only closer to her, but uh, closer to him, excuse me, closer to Christ, but a lot of people closer to Christ. The story is a really powerful one that shows conversion, that shows healing, um, that shows holiness and the pursuit of holiness. Uh, as, as always, just as a reminder, the Ave Explorer series, everything is available on AveMariaPress.com. You can sign up for the podcast. These videos are all backlogged there, all the way back to our series on social justice, the one that we did on Catholic Family Life. There's tons of awesome content sitting there for you. The podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. All the articles. We have a great article tomorrow with Jen Norton that you should totally read. So everything's available on Ave Maria Press. Tonight, we are joined by Bonnie Ingstrom. She is a wife and a mom. She's got eight wonderful kids. Her husband is a science teacher. So we're kindred spirits because our husbands are teaching science and we like to write about Jesus. She's a writer for Blessed Is She. Uh, she's an author and a speaker. She's a baker. You should follow her on Instagram and watch all of her baking videos. I only know how to make a pie crust because of Bonnie, because I watched that video like 10 times to figure out how to do it properly. Really? Um, she, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I that haven't baked so in a happy. while because of, you know, everything, but I'm ready to get back to it. So tonight we have with us Bonnie Ingstrom. Bonnie, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to know about oh, the yeah. baking. Well, I had never, so side, we're not even going to talk about saints at first. Let's talk about baking and Crisco. <laughs> yeah. I had been using butter and none of my crusts were good. And then I discovered the giant can of Crisco because of your video. <laughs> Screenshotted what you posted. Mm -hmm. the the you know the old recipe from the box I have it saved in my favorites on my phone and when people ask me oh what's your recipe that's what I just send them I was like this is from Bonnie go watch her videos and you'll learn how to do lattice so thank you um, not only do you have an incredible story to tell us tonight but you taught me how to bake through that's the internet so exciting. Um, oh I'm so happy about that thank yeah you. so Bonnie tell us a little bit about yourself besides the fact that you're a baker and a wife and a mom where are you what are you doing and uh, maybe what was the best thing that happened to you today okay so I live in central Illinois I'm in the diocese of Peoria and um that's where I am what and really what you said, I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom who sometimes writes and sometimes speaks. And um, sometimes I get to travel the country giving talks, uh, but mostly lately I've just been a stay at home mom uh, baking during quarantine, like every, <laughs> everyone like else. Like everybody else. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Except I, I have failed at sourdough. Like I can't do sourdough. No one in my family even likes it. So I've just moved past that. But um I think the best thing that happened today was uh, I got to take all of my kids, all of my kids to school. <laughs> hey, praise um, Jesus for that. <laughs> yes. Um, we, my husband had COVID three weeks ago. And so we just got out of quarantine and um, man, oh man, like they were ready to be back. 
I was ready to just be able to get out of the house. And so I was able to have coffee with some friends at a very mm. socially distanced spacing, you know, and we prayed together. And I mean, it's just hard to do that when all eight of my children are around. Yeah. So uh, I just, I can't three. even do it with two, much less eight. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them's yeah. little and just sits there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I just had three with me and then, I don't know. So that was just absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, that was the best thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and again, we're so grateful to have you with us tonight. You know, I, there are certain people in the internet world that I like, I look to, to just see what are they doing and how are they doing? And then how do they manage life and faith? And so last week we had the Cotters on and they shared with us a little bit in between the Wi-Fi cutting out because Hurricaneville, um, about how faith is, implemented in their homes. That's kind of the, the question I want to start with tonight. With eight kids, what's their age ranges? 12 to one and a half. Okay, so that's a huge span of children, all kind of at different levels of, of I'm sure, understanding, maybe even of personal faith, mm-hmm. um, with a husband who works and, and with a mom who's kind of juggling a lot and with, a, hi. <laughs> Can you go ask daddy? I can't help you right now, so go ask daddy, okay? <laughs> That'll Sorry. happen on my end. I would be willing to bet in about 12 to 15 minutes okay. when the mac and cheese is consumed. We're <laughs> kid friendly on the Ave Explorer show. Uh, the, you know, how do you manage faith as a priority in your home? And this is, a, I mean, I'm just really curious with that age range and with different levels of understanding, how is faith kept as a priority in the Engstrom house? Yeah. So, um, I think the first thing that we do is we don't act like our kids are ever too young or too old for something. Mm. So, um, you know, like, for example, we have every morning on our way to school, this is something I learned from a good friend of mine on our way to school where, you know, all eight of my kids and I are driving in our big van and um, each child, like, you know, Joseph's day was today. So my Mm. son, Joseph, who's in first grade, he led morning prayer Mm. and he prays for, you know, people who have cancer for quarantine to end, um, you know, for Halloween to not be canceled. (laughs) I'm right there with you, Joseph. I want to wear my costume. (laughs) Amen. And then, um, we do a litany of saints. So all of my kids are named after saints. And so, and then our family is under the patronage of JP two. We belong Mm -hmm. to St. Patrick's parish. So the, the child who's leading the prayers will say, JP2 and St. Patrick, and then everyone says, pray for us. And then my confirmation saint is Elizabeth. So I say St. Elizabeth, and everyone says, pray for us. And then Lydia says St. Lydia and St. Anne. And we just go on and on and on. And even my daughter, Miriam, who's two years old, and she says, Miriam, Joan of Arc. Like... (laughs) You know, she That's doesn't awesome. even, but she's still, or, or like my son, Thomas, he'll say he's named after Thomas Aquinas and father em- Emil Capon, but he'll say Thomas Emil Capon, Peter Pan. <laughs> it's like, whatever, Lord, the Lord knows. Iron you know? Man, pray for us, right? Like exactly. it just works. <laughs> exactly. And so again, like no one is too old or too young for that. And then even like when we get out the little nativity set at Christmas time, like the little tykes one or whatever it mm-hmm. is, the little, you do know what I mean? Yeah. The little like people one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Little people. It's obviously a children's toy, but like even my 12 year olds will sit down and play with it, you know, mm-hmm. and arrange it or whatever. And so I don't know. I just think there's, if we're supposed to be childlike, um, but we're also supposed to really know our faith, then I, f- I feel like we have to kind of keep both of those things balanced yeah and and alive so I don't know now I don't mean to sound like overly pious because <laughs> there's a lot that sometimes our there's night some prayer, screaming in between that oh, for me. sure <laughs> oh for sure and sometimes our kids will lead night prayer sometimes I'll lead night prayer and have it kind of be one of those uh like uh Ignatian kind of you know things where like you're picturing yourself and there's God and you know whatever and um just kind of helping them to like experience silence and talk mm-hmm. to the Lord in silence. And, and sometimes we just say a glory be go to bed because <laughs> like Lord is done, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Last night we had a priest friend over my, my dear friend, Andy. Um, we have not seen him since he was ordained because of everything. So we we're like, you know what? We're going to have a social distance dinner. He stuck around through bedtime routine with Rose. And I was like, yes, 
we get to show off to the priest our family prayers and we do a little litany and we like list off the people we want to pray for Mm -hmm. nope wasn't having it literally declared i don't want to pray and like pulled the blankets up over her head i was like welcome to our home can you give her a blessing please because she might need an exorcism by the morning and (laughs) you know it was but annie's a friend but like yeah sometimes it goes well sometimes it doesn't you said something in that that i want to i want to dig in on your family's under the patronage of jp2 what does that mean did you just like pick him as papa like how did that happen yeah yeah basically i just told everyone (laughs) (laughs) mom has declared yeah. At first I thought like, what if we had a saint for the year as a family mm. and as a family, we just all got to know him and we learned about him. And, um, and basically I, and I, I wanted it to be JP too. Like I wanted to, um, kind of, I just wanted my kids to understand why he was so important to me and my mm. formation and everything like that. And so I picked him and then I just didn't want to let him go. So <laughs> So I said, forget the year thing. He's just going to be like a patron of our family. He's our guy. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that look like? Like, do you, I mean, do you have images of him? Is one of your children named after him or is he just like, he's the family saint? Yeah. None of my kids are named after him, but we do have pictures actually in our, like in our bathroom, my husband and I are master bath. Um, sweet. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's the picture of him shaving. Oh, nice. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I know that picture. Yeah, so I have that framed in our bathroom. Um, And we have a couple of other images. And then a lot of it is just like, you know, we celebrate his feast day, which Mm -hmm. just happened. And and then just asking for his intercession on a regular basis. But Mm -hmm. uh, but like we have children's books. There's that really cute... um, that I'm yeah. forgetting Lolic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have like that children's book and a couple other things and just talking about him and using him as an example. Um, I have found, especially my two oldest boys are 10 and 11. And as they become more active um, and more, you know, they're not little boys anymore. Mm-hmm. And so they need to know that there are men um, who were like rugged and outdoorsy and strong and, and they loved Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. And so a young JP too, that's exactly who he was, you know, Mm -hmm. out camping and hiking and, um, you know, Pierre Giorgio is another good one for that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how we do it. Yeah. When I, what you said there, like we, we want our children, we want our family members, we want young people we walk with in youth ministry or, you know, every person to see these examples and to, to feel, like we can relate to them. And then they, they relate to us, you know, sometimes saints come and find us. Sometimes saints kind of infiltrate our lives. And, and, you know, the next thing, you know, like, it's like, you're stalking me, leave me alone. No, I don't want to name my child this. Okay, fine. She could be Claire. Like, that's like, you know, this kind of happens, but your family has a pretty remarkable story when it comes to the intercession of holy men and women. Um, this is not the only reason I wanted to talk to you tonight. I think you've got great wisdom and insights into family life and sanctity, and we're going to continue the conversation, but I'd love to hear the story uh, that went viral 10 years ago, and then a book recently, 61 Minutes to a Miracle. Um, can you tell us the story of your son, James, and Archbishop Fulton Sheen? Sure, yes. So, uh, you know, about 11 years ago, I became pregnant, surprise, with my um, third third born child. And it was, I mean, just kind of the whole pregnancy, God was um, just very present in that whole pregnancy. But I like to say one of the ways that he provided for us is that he really brought Fulton Sheen into my life in a very Mm -hmm. big way during that pregnancy. And, um, you know, Fulton Sheen, he was born and raised in central Illinois, which is where I am. And so I always kind of knew who he was, but it it was when I was pregnant with James that um, I started like watching YouTube videos of his um, old show, Life is Worth Living, and just fell in love with him. And um, Travis and I decided to name our our son after him. So it's his name is James Fulton. And um, starting with kind of that, you know, that one fateful day in front of YouTube <laughs> and that decision, that was the beginning of on a daily basis asking for Fulton Sheen's intercession, right? Mm-hmm. So Fast forward to uh, September in 2010, and I'm in labor, and, um, you know, everything was fine, everything, we were healthy, um, and, like, again, we just kind of had this, like, calm and, and peace, and um, that, 
you know, like a supernatural, like from God, common peace. Mm-hmm. But uh, we thought something amazing was going to happen and, and, and something amazing did happen, but it was, um, there was a knot in James's umbilical cord. Mm-hmm. And so when, and he was a home birth, it was a plan to home birth. Um, and so when he was delivered, um, that knot had tightened so much during the delivery process that he was a stillborn. Um, he was like a zero on the APGAR. Um, mm. And so um, my midwife began CPR. Um, you know, she couldn't find a pulse. He wasn't breathing. Nothing was happening. Um, so she began CPR. My husband did an emergency baptism. Um, our friend who was there praying um, the rosary and taking pictures, she went and called 911. Um, and I just kind of sat on the floor of my bedroom going into a state of shock. But I remember in my head repeating Fulton Sheen, Fulton Sheen, Fulton Sheen. And I, I mean, honestly, I think it was just God had allowed me to build up that habit of calling mm-hmm. on Fulton Sheen during my pregnancy. And so just in this time when I had no words, that was just who mm-hmm. I relied on to speak for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so James is taken in an, emer- or in an ambulance to the emergency room. In the ambulance, the whole time he is hooked to a heart monitor and he's what they call PEA on the monitor. So pulseless electrical activity. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that means anything to mm-hmm. you guys, but um, like if you think of a heartbeat, there's like the bump bump and then the jigga jigga bump bump jigga jigga. So it's just the jigga jiggas, like the little squiggles. Mm-hmm. And legally, you can be declared dead if mm-hmm. you are PEA on the monitor. So his whole 20 minute ride, James is PEA. He gets to um, the ED. He continues to not have a heartbeat. Everything that they try in the ambulance and in the emergency room, nothing is working. And so uh, the ne- there's a neonatologist who is you know, present and helping. And she says, okay, we're going to try for five more minutes and then we're going to call it. And you know, nothing mm-hmm. happens. Um, five minutes are up. Everyone takes their hands off to call time of death. And it was at that moment that James's heart started to beat again. It shot right up to 147 beats per minute, which is a healthy heart rate for a newborn baby. Mm-hmm. It never stopped again. And altogether, James had been dead for 61 minutes from delivery to that moment in the, in the emergency room. He'd been dead for over an hour. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, what was, you know, he was stabilized and taken to the NICU and he ended up spending seven weeks there. And at the beginning of those seven weeks, they, th- you know, they expected massive organ failure. Um, and in fact, you know, the doctors even told the hospital chaplain and the hospital chaplain confirmed James um, because you know, that was just, mm-hmm. and they only knew that he had been in their emergency room for about 20 minutes. And based on that time frame, they expected massive organ failure. So mm. once we like added everything up a couple days, when James was a couple days old, it was kind of like, that's, that can't be right. He should be dead, you know, when you get to that, but um, he lived. And then they told us he would just have this very long list of severe disabilities and he just kept getting better. And this whole time I'm using my blog and I'm using Facebook asking for people all around the world to pray for my son and um, through the intercession of Fulton Sheen. And they do. (laughs) Yeah, I was one of them. I saw that Facebook post in college. That is incredible. Yeah. You know, I've never thought about how it went viral. Oh, yeah. It was Catholic viral. And like that's when blogs and Facebook were the thing, not even Twitter and Instagram. Right. So I can only imagine had it been like today. Um, But yeah, I remember having a conversation with a friend saying, this woman's asking for prayers for her little boy who was born dead. So we need to pray um, like distinctly. And then when the book arrived, I was like, I, I remember this. So yeah. So, so people all over the world, including yeah. this conversation, which was preordained from the beginning of time, because God's That's outside of time. Beautiful. So keep going. You're asking yes. everybody to, to pray. Yes. And so, and people did, it was just incredible. It was absolutely incredible. And, you know, James spent seven weeks in the NICU. Um, he's discharged, comes home, and he starts hitting his milestones. Um, and but, so in the in the um, NICU, in those first like 24 hours, they had done an MRI, which showed that he had extensive brain damage. Mm-hmm. And when we were home, 
there was a follow-up MRI. And I remember we got the, we got the results from the follow-up MRI the week of Christmas. It was like three days before Christmas, I think. And, um, it showed a perfectly normal, healthy brain. Mm. And so um, once we had that, and then just also the lived proof, you know, like he's sitting up, he's using his pincher fingers and he's doing all these things when he mm -hmm. should be doing them. Um, we called the Sheen Foundation and let them know that a, a miracle had <laughs> happened. We thought they might want to like put it in a file somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Write it down. Right. Yes. And um, they decided to, uh, do a full tribunal and investigate it. And the, uh, that, um, Pizzizio, the, the, um, which is kind of the compilation mm -hmm. of his medical records and witness testimony and everything that was submitted to the congregation for the causes of saints. And in, uh, well, a year, I guess maybe a year ago. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2020. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In June 2019, it was approved by Pope Francis for wow. Fulton Sheen's beatification. Wow. So. so let's, okay. I really, can we get in the weeds on this? Cause like, yeah. this is fascinating to me. And, you know, I used to teach high school theology. So like, I can imagine students would have a thousand questions of like, okay, so there's this file that's compiled of all these different medical testimonies. Do they just like call the ER doctor and be like, okay, buddy, we need you to come down and get an interview. Like, what does that all look like? Yeah. So the first thing that had to happen was I had to, um, Travis and I both had to sign releases so mm -hmm. that we could even like, we had to give the, those names and permission for those doctors and nurses to even acknowledge. Right. Right. HIPAA, <laughs> acknowledge all that, that right. stuff. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and then they were invited by, uh, the Peoria diocese and the Sheen foundation to come in for an interview. And so mm -hmm. over the course of, I mean, I mean, maybe it was like a week, but every witness. So there was like my pastor and some friends, um, and then, you know, doctors and nurses, um, Travis and myself, we're all asked the same, I don't even remember how many questions, if there was like 150 or something like that. And, and all of it is to um, filter down to, to get to the truth of, did a miracle happen? And did it happen mm -hmm. through Fulton Sheen's intercession? Mm -hmm. So uh, there was the, there was a canon lawyer. Um, there was a doctor who was sitting. Um, he's, he's also part of the Sheen Foundation, but um, he was just a medical doctor to, to ask clarifying questions, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, Oh my goodness. So, uh, and it was interesting because, um, you know, some of the, some of the people on staff, um, at the hospital are Catholic. Some of them are not Catholic. Some of them aren't even Christians. And, mm -hmm. but all of, you know, everyone had, there was, a. Uh, a Baptist nurse who she took care of, she took such good care of James. It was beautiful. And um, I asked her if she would give her testimony and she was just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different team. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And in, and in the end she did, she said, you know, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of what the Catholic church teaches, but I do believe that Jesus Christ performed a miracle with your son. Mm. And so I'm going to share my testimony mm. to that you know, so was there, so you're going through this process. I mean, it's a, it took a long time. It was nine years. You have a little boy on your hands. You had other kids while all this yes. is going on. What was going through you and Travis's mind? Like, how was your family handling this? Like you, you almost were like sitting on this big secret. Cause I know like, right. We had a, a podcast episode with um, the, the second vice postulator for the cause for father Patrick Payton. And they can't like give any details yeah. about the miracles like it is a big hush hush secret so like right. you're holding on to this huge secret how what, what was going on in your heart so it was very different in our situation because I was a mommy blogger and yeah, my yeah. <laughs> miracle had been public from the very beginning like mm -hmm. I was just sharing you know, so you couldn't just like swallow that back in. Right. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Didn't exactly. Happen. <laughs> exactly. And um, and and they always said like so the diocese. It was kind of funny because you know I live twenty minutes from Peoria, where my bishop mm -hmm. is. Right. Um. I know people, and people people know me, and because it's a small Catholic world or whatever. So like in the in our Catholic diocesan paper, it would say the miracle is of an infant who is, and everyone's reading it and they're like, that's Bonnie Angstrom. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's James. <laughs> yes, yeah. Everyone knows who it is. And so I had permission to talk about it in part okay. because I had already spoken about it, right. but also because, um, you know, it was my story, mm -hmm. but they did not release 
James's name until the miracle was approved by the Pope. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. To kind of protect him. And then the book was published not long after, which tells this story right. in detail. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what was that day like? Did, does the Pope call your house? Does he have your cell phone number? How did you find out? Oh my goodness, I wish. Um, how did I find out? Like a tweet, a, a tweet. It was just, it was a computer. You know what? I think it was. <laughs> I think because this of is course. what they, this is what happened. This is exactly what happened. Um, the diocese knew, and what they always and like they found out on Rome time, right? Right. So I was fast asleep when they got the phone call, and they sent me an email, which I don't have. I mean. Even like printed out and framed in the kitchen. No, I I don't. <laughs> like like when I it was so funny because God bless the priest who sent it out. Um, but he he just it is very much like according to who he is that he sent an email. Do you know what I mean? Like he hey, by he, the way, <laughs> yes, he probably even thought like, oh, I don't want to text her because it might wake her up at four in the morning or whatever. You know, like yeah. So I woke up because a notification buzzed on my phone because Wendy Clark had tagged me because she, she had like woken up and, re- and loves Fulton Sheen and she read the news and she had tagged me. And I was like, what? So <laughs> a lot of people in the world knew before I knew. <laughs> before the mom right. of the miracle baby. Now th- this miracle, I mean, he was, he was dead. He was, he was, what you said PEA right that he was yes. not he did not have a pulse there was no brain activity like he was he was not alive when he was born right um and then he was so like when the Vatican is classifying miracles like they have different types there's miracles of healing there's miracles of conversion like there's all sorts of different classifications how do they classify James's miracle um and like so, what were the medical details surrounding that that is a great question um because, you know, like for the canonization process, like the theologians, there's a, a board of theologians who mm. just study that part of the thing, you know, and then they make their recommendation to the for the congregation for the cause of the saints. Mm-hmm. Then there's also a medical advisory board. And um, they like took all of James's medical records from his first whatever of life. But then they also sent us back to a doctor. Well, actually, we had to go to two separate doctors independently who didn't know James's background and have him... Um, mm-hmm you know, seen by them so that they could say he's a normal boy develop, you know, hitting all of his milestones or whatever. Like they wanted updated information. Um, James sees a speech therapist. And so she even had to write a, like a letter of like all kinds of kids have this delay, (laughs) you know what I mean? And, um, but in the end there was, um, like every, the theologians were unanimous. It was a miracle through Fulton Sheen. The medical experts were, were unanimous that it was a miracle which that's actually very rare, I've been told, mm. for both of the advisory te- teams to be completely unanimous mm. is very rare. Um, but the one thing that there was a disagreement about was the medical board. Um, they didn't agree about whether it was a, I think it's a first class miracle, which is a resurrection from the dead, mm. or a second class miracle, which is a healing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in the end, they decided to to call it a second class miracle, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. just because they weren't I mean, I don't really know how that works, the fine details of that. Um, I wasn't in the room where it happened. (laughs) No, you just birthed the child. Yeah, but that's a good Hamilton reference. Yes, thank you. Okay. (laughs) But um, I I do think that's really interesting that. Yeah. So we say it was a resurrection, that he was brought back to life. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's interesting that, um, that, you know, even at the Vatican, there was there, there are definitely those who agree with that statement, but I mean, mm-hmm. and I understand they want to err on the side of caution right. and I totally respect that. Um, but I held my dead son in my hands. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know? So uh, that, so I want to, I guess, and before I ask this question, I just want to encourage folks that are watching. If you have questions for Bonnie, we have her put them in the chat, uh, put them in the comments and we will ask them for you. Um, Aaron's going to text them to me as we're on the, you know, on the conversation. And then if you're watching this on IGTV tomorrow uh, or today, I guess, um, whenever you're watching it, if you've got questions, tag Bonnie in the comments and she'll come on and talk to you. Um, You know, that was traumatic. Like when you birth a child who is not alive and then comes back to life, 
Um, and then that whole experience of being shared, you know, you're sharing it and you're writing about it and people are praying around the world and I'm sure supporting your family in very tangible and spiritual ways. You know, again, what was what was circulating through the heart and the mind of of you, a mom who also still had two other children, who now has a newborn who spent seven weeks in the NICU, which is hard. Um, mm -hmm. Like what what happened with your faith? And then how did Fulton Sheen maybe continue to console you and to be that saintly friend to you? Um, I will say I relied. So first of all, God gave me a really good marriage mm. and that was so important. And, um, I'm sorry. He, um, I, yeah, if I didn't have Travis, it, it would be a very different story, mm -hmm. I think. But, um, God gave me a, a really good marriage to get me through this. Um, so that was like the first blessing, but then we both, really relied on the Eucharist and mm. on our saints. So I remember, and I even talk about it in my, in the book where I would um, like, a, I was not staying at the NICU because for a while I couldn't even like hold him or touch him, you know? So I just trusted the people yeah. and I went home to be with my two other kids who needed mm -hmm. their mom. So mm -hmm. I would go and visit James every day and um, I would get in my minivan and I would just, imagine like my team of saints loading into the minivan with me. So like the mm -hmm. blessed mother rode shotgun, there was Fulton <laughs> Sheen, there was St. Elizabeth, you know, like I was just kind of, there's Joan of Arc. I was just loading up all of these saints and they just traveled with me down that interstate to get to my son. And we just, you know, I, I really felt like it was like a rap video where you're like walking in slow motion and the entourage is behind you, you know, like as we're going through the hospital doors and that's what it was like. And so I never felt alone, mm. never, ever. And I'm sure it was the, the power of the prayers of the body of Christ that just carried us through that too. Um, but I so often, and even to this day, you know, sometimes I'll like, if something's going on with James, I'll be like, Fulton, what are we going to do with him? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, you're a miracle child. Like, you know, <laughs> do you use it on him? <laughs> Good <laughs> <have> a guilt. <laughs> I, but I love that image of this, of the van of like, of your, of your squad, of your team. Cause that's what the saints are for us. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know. Yeah. But I have, I have turned to Fulton Sheen in my prayers so many times and just kind of, um, you know, parenting James, but also one thing that Fulton Sheen did for me personally was he led me to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. I had never had a strong devotion to the Blessed Mother. Like, mm -hmm. I know I said she rode shotgun, but that was just out of respect because she was Jesus's mom, She's you mom. know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but he really, his devotion to the Blessed Mother is really what made me get what a devotion to the Blessed Mother was all about. Mm -hmm. And so Fulton Sheen led me to Mary and Mary, of course, has only led me closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that has just been such a beautiful, very, very fruitful relationship for us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Does that answer so, the question? Yo, for sure. I mean, because it's. That's a lot, you know, like yeah. it, childbirth is traumatic on its own. Mm -hmm. You get hit by a car essentially, but then to have this on top of it and to then immediately begin asking for the intercession of this holy man that you had this relationship with. Matt had a really interesting question. So y'all have this miracle. You, you call the Fulton Sheen Society and say, we need you to look at this because this is pretty profound. Was there ever a part where you had to prove that you were actually asking for Fulton Sheen's intercession, that you didn't just like open up the phone book and pick a cause? Um, like, did you have to show your devotion leading up to the miracle or was it a simple, I prayed to him and you know, my baby was born without a pulse and then he had one pretty cool story. Like, what was that like? <laughs> yes. So we did. That's a great question. Um, we actually had uh, a friend who, part of the, she was a witness, an official witness in the tribunal. And part of the reason she was called in was to talk about like, I know Bonnie had a growing devotion to Fulton Sheen. Mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, she was asking for his intercession during the pregnancy and everything. Um, and then, and then even that we had multiple questions about that as part of the, um, 
the interviews, the witness interviews that Travis and I both had to explain, like, yes, we knew we were going to name our son after Fulton Sheen. That's right. The name. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and that, because a lot of people thought maybe we had added that yeah. afterwards, but it was always part of, it was always going to be James Fulton. Um, Another so, reason why you should tell people the baby name well in advance <laughs> and find out the gender, right? <laughs> to prove a miracle down the line. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Oh, golly. What else was that? I feel like there's another question that he had. Um, so, d- like, was it, you know, you had to prove that you were asking for intercession and that yes. you were showing your devotion? Yeah. Yes. So the other cool thing is because I was doing it on a blog. If oh, you yeah. Go t- if you go to um, my website, bonnieangstrom.com and go to the blog and um, go all the way back to September 16th, 2010 which is James's birthday, you'll read the summary of what happened. And at the end, I say, if a miracle happens, we'll attribute it to Fulton Sheen. Mm. And I was just speaking. Yeah. Complete. I mean, yeah, I didn't know what I was saying at all. Yeah. I was yeah. so naive, you know, and I was in a state of shock and I was exhausted and whatever. But um, I mean, I really did mean that, you know, and, and from that day, people started using that prayer, mm-hmm. but for the official, like as far as the Vatican was concerned, they only looked at the 61 minutes when James was dead. Mm-hmm. So, and during that time, the whole world doesn't know it's a very small group of people and all of those people were interviewed and all of those people said, I prayed to um, Jesus. I prayed to God, the father, I prayed to the Holy spirit, which, you know, three Mm -hmm. and one, or I prayed to Fulton Sheen in my head. When I said his name, Travis invoked his name during the baptism and our friend Jenny, who was there and she's the one who called 911. She had, um, just as soon as she heard James's name in the baptism, James Fulton, she had just this incredible, um, sense of Fulton Sheen's presence. And she had a vision of Fulton Sheen. And Mm. so those were the three prayers that were, um, really investigated and attributed to Fulton Sheen for the miracle. Mm. So it's just all so cool. I mean, it's so Catholic and so (laughs) just awesome to think about, you know, this moment in human history that, that a saint is able to then, influence through his prayers like bringing the which then gives verifiable proof in the tangible world of his being in the presence of god and so then now for all of eternity uh you know his story will be told your son's name will be referenced as the baby who was saved by the prayers of this holy man who lived you know in the united states and was this apostle of television and 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 which you know such a profound preacher that we can actually we know the name we know his voice saints yeah. whose voices you can hear are my favorite yeah. because you know like you can feel them talking like i play thea bowman's speech to the bishops frequently because it it's just like it's i i need a pep talk and she's kind of you know <laughs> she's my spiritual friend and and she can give me that pep talk um I guess though, and I'll I'll play the the role of devil's advocate for a second. Some people are going to hear this kind of stuff, or some people are going to read the book or hear the story and be like, "I don't believe that," um, or you know, that's inside baseball. The church is just trying to do it to make themselves look good, so all these people are lying. Obviously, we know that that's not true, but some people really do struggle to believe this element and this aspect. What w- what would be your words of encouragement for anybody? I guess that's struggling to believe all this, but who have a hard time accepting this aspect of our faith or who, who think, well, I can just go to Jesus. I don't need to talk to the saints. That's praying to the dead. That's idolization. I don't need their pictures in my house. What's, what's your response to that? So my response to that part, <clears throat> to the relationship with the saint part is okay. <laughs> <You're missing> um, out. <laughs> um, yes, you are missing out. And, and I understand kind of the trepidation because I've experienced that before um, myself, you know, I had to get to this point in my life of really embracing it. But, um, I, I have been blessed to have really wonderful, especially women in my life, um, who have befriended me, who have mentored me, Mm -hmm. who have taught me how to read scripture, how to make scripture come alive, how to enter into it, how to pray in a way that is, um, just more than just the, the rote, you know, Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, whatever, you know, dear God, we just, you know, 
<laughs> whatever that, yeah. whatever that rote prayer looks like. But um, I believe that the Lord is not the God of, you know, he's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And mm -hmm. that when we die, we are fully alive. And I know that the saints can, beca because I've experienced it firsthand, not just that the church teaches this, but I have experienced it firsthand, that the saints can do the same thing that those in real life friends and mentors have done mm -hmm. for me, you know, mm -hmm. and reading their words and, or like with Fulton Sheen, watching his TV show, like how cool is that, you know, yeah. um, like that leads me closer to Christ and that friendship, that connection that I feel with him. I mean, I I have felt that with like other celebrities, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's kind of weird that we'll like, we'll accept that like, you know, if we see in a movie that someone is standing at their mom's grave and they say, I miss you, mom, like that's okay. But mm -hmm. we can't, <laughs> but we can't yeah. say to a saint in heaven, you know, pray for me. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I struggle with that. Um, I feel, I feel like there's kind of a lapse there, but um, so I think it's okay. Like if you're not there yet, you're not there yet. But mm -hmm. I think just to be, to listen to people's own experience and to know that the end goal is not like when those women mentored me in real life, in real life, um, the end goal was for me to love Jesus more and to be closer mm -hmm. to Jesus. And the end goal with saint, with my relationships with saints is exactly the same thing. This is mm -hmm. not idol worship. This is just a friendship that is, you know, mm -hmm. iron sharpening iron. Well, they're, I'm not sharpening them. <laughs> you can even to pray to God. I mean, that's yes, yeah, good. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you we're know, we're putting them I mean. to work. We're just, we're making sure that they're not unemployed saints, right? We're yes, giving them jobs. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> love that. So yeah. I guess at the end, my just kind of the last, I guess, word of encouragement, mom to eight out in the world doing ministry and in the home, you know, raising a family, the saints, they lead us closer to Jesus. They encourage holiness. They encourage prayer. They they want us to be heroically virtuous the same way they were. Mm -hmm. um, I guess besides Fulton Sheen, who's and, and the ones that you mentioned earlier, like in kind of the family squad, maybe who's a saint in the year and the chaos that has been 2020 that you have been closest to or who's like been you know finding you this you know looking for you uh the same way you know we know that they kind of hunt us down who who have yeah. you been closest to so i i don't even know <laughs> i kind of sprung this on you sorry yeah no that's okay well because you said that i could not to mention the ones that i already mentioned but um it's so okay that, it's okay if elizabeth is your girl <laughs> okay Actually, um, Father Emil Capon, and he's just a servant of God right now, but he has um, he has an amazing story. He was a prisoner of war during the Korean War. He was a military chaplain, mm -hmm. and he died in the um, in the POW camp. Um, he was from Kansas, and I just like there's another like man, you know, <laughs> like he's a guy, he's from the heartland. He was hardworking. Um, and I just, I feel kind of a connection with him because he seems like someone that my dad or my grandpa, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know. I just cling to him a lot, actually. Like things are crazy. He experienced crazy in mm -hmm. war and everything like that. And so, um, I kind of use him as a frame of reference and I've been asking for his intercession just a lot for our nation. Mm -hmm. And, um, cause I, you know, again, he served in the military and I know he was patriotic and he loved America, but he loved Jesus more. And mm -hmm. so he's someone who I've actually been, um, I've been, gr my devotion to him has been growing over the years, but I've been looking to him a lot recently. Mm. I sure. like that. Father Emil Capon. Yeah, E M I L. Okay, everybody yeah. look him up. You named a child after him. I mean, you've got yeah, Thomas. Yeah. We, well, we pronounce it Emil, Thomas Emil. But um, when I told my grandfathers the name, they were you, they they both said, "Oh, you mean Emil?" <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I missed that generational thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a good name. It's coming back into into style. It is. Yeah. Well, Bonnie, where can we find you and follow you and buy your book? We're going to link it tomorrow in the Instagram. Um, 61 minutes. Look how cute he is on the front. Yeah. Uh, making reference to the PEA line too. That's, yes. that's excellent. But where can we follow you? So I am, I, I already said my website is bonnieingstrom.net. 
Health.net. Sorry. Um, and then um, I'm just at Bonnie Angstrom on Instagram. I have a Twitter handle. I'm like never there. I'm Bonnie <laughs> L. Angstrom on um, on Facebook. So, nice. yeah. Well, Inst That's Instagram's nice. where I've gotten to know you really well. And then you write for Blessed Is She, so you've got devotionals yes. there. Yes. Um, so folks can follow you there. Well, Bonnie, thanks. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, we are you. just so grateful for you telling this story and, and giving us insights into what that whole process looks like, but then like even what faith looks like with a family and with the saintly squad. So, so for thank sure. you for your time tonight. Yeah. Thank you. This was a joy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw you off the video for just a second. Okay. Uh, but everybody, you know, it's, it's remarkable how the stories of the saints, the lives of the saints, um, are not, we've said this before, and we'll probably say it again, they're not fairy tale cartoon figures that lived once upon a time, but they're actively part of our life. We just heard a story of a saint who was alive in, in, in the, you know, the 20th century, whose voice we can hear and whose videos we can watch, and whose books we have ready access to. There's a Fulton Sheen shelf behind me. The Divine Romance by Fulton Sheen changed my life when I was in college, and I pass it out like candy to anybody that wants a good book about the love of God um, that can actively influence our life today, that can not only give us examples of holiness, but then show us the profound power of God. That's what we're talking about this whole Ave Explore series. You know, we kind of have a new tagline for Ave Explorers. We're, we're having uh, real conversations. We're, we're sharing real stories with real people about their real faith, about their real faith journeys, about what's going on in their lives and how they're processing what they believe and how they're growing closer to Jesus Christ and, and what's going on in the world today and how our Catholic faith affects our everyday lives and, and how our everyday life um, should, should really make us more Catholic, especially today's everyday life with everything going on in the world. I think the stories of the saints can be an anchor for us and all the content we're creating from the articles and the videos, the lives, the podcasts, the special social media content, um, that can help us be holier and be saints ourselves. Tomorrow we have a podcast episode with Meg Hunter Kilmer, like I mentioned earlier, the, the Saint Ninja. She talks about her new book, Saints Around the World, and tells us the story of some really incredible saints, some of which you've probably never heard of, and that's kind of her her skill is she's able to introduce you to new saints. Um, coming up on Friday, we have a great conversation with Carrie Anna Frey, where she tells us um, about how her family liturgically lives and incorporates the lives of the saints in their, their meal times and their, their, their family prayer. And, and like Bonnie said, on the way to school, um, they homeschool. So how they incorporate the saints into their, their education. Coming up next week on our Instagram live, um, or excuse me, our Facebook live, and then on IGTV, we have a conversation with two incredible women, uh, Vanessa Goldberg and Tabo Hall. And we're going to be talking about diversity, diversity in the church, diversity in the lives of the saints and the stories of the saints that we tell, why we should make sure that we're not just showing saints of a certain, a certain ethnicity, but that we look globally so that people can see themselves in the story of the saints. So there's all this excellent content coming up. You should go check out AveMariaPress.com. You can sign up to get the emails on Wednesday that has the info about the podcast on Wednesday and Friday that has the replay of the Instagram, Facebook live that we're doing. We're just so grateful to be walking with you, to be journeying with you, to have you a uh, part of our Ave Explorers family. Uh, so thanks for watching tonight. We're just, we're super grateful that you tuned in. We hope that you share it when this is over, that you invite more people to watch it, that you go buy Bonnie's book, 61 Minutes to a Miracle, and that you follow along with everything we're creating for Ave Explorers. Have a great evening, everyone.